exporting from machine, importing into Pro Tools. That's what we're going to be talking about today, Momaki Studio One. We'll be covering drum tracks only because those need to get separated out so that you can get a proper mix in Pro Tools. So let's get started. So we got machine open. First thing we want to do is get to the drums. So my drum sounds is on group B1. We're going to open that because I am using battery for my drum sounds. We're going to go to the second track. Go to output, go to direct out, set it to three, four. Go to the third track, go to output, go to direct out, go to five, six. And you're just going to keep going down the line. You want to start with the second track going to three, four, because the first track, which on here is the kick drum, is automatically going to go to uh, output one, two. All right, so once you've got them all routed, you want to switch over from this menu to the mixer. So what you're going to do is on the mixer, you're going to make sure the inputs are set to receive the signal from battery. Because battery, we just set up all the outputs going from battery. Now we want to set the inputs on the mixer in machine. So on the on the track one input of the mixer, you're just going to leave that alone to none. Then you're going to go on down the line to track two, and you'll see it set up in a row. So kit two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to 16. Once that's set, go ahead and hit play just to make sure that all the drums got separated into the mixer of group uh, B1. So hit play. As you can see, all of my drum sounds have been separated, okay? So once all the drum sounds are separated, what you wanna do is make sure that you cut the volumes down because when you import these into Pro Tools, you do not want the levels to be too loud. Because if the audio gets recorded into Pro Tools distorted, it does not matter if you turn the volumes down after that, the volume will still be distorted. So I've, I've noticed that in Machine, the, it automatically records and plays things at a, at a pretty high volume. And you, you can't really do anything at that volume once it's in Pro Tools, especially if it distorts. So what you want to do is go ahead and go into the mixer and make sure that everything is at a, a recordable level. So I like to go a little bit below negative 10 and then kind of mix it from there. All right. So if you look at my levels on all the drum tracks, I've already brought everything pretty much down. So as you can see, everything is kind of below negative 10. So I know that when I go into Pro Tools, uh, going below negative 10, that it's at a volume that I can, you know, I can turn up or turn down or adjust however I need it. It's a very important step. Make sure you go back in the machine, go to the mixer and cut those levels down. Otherwise, you'll be, be recording distorted, uh, distorted tracks. From that point, we'll take it out of the mixer. We'll go ahead and we are ready to export audio. Okay. Now from these settings, we want to go change master to sound because we want each separated sound. And for right now, I'm only showing you guys the drums, but on group A, C, D, E, and F, I got sounds on those groups as well. Um, but the same steps for the drums, you would do that for the sounds as well. And the sounds are a little bit easier because it's only one sound. Whereas on the drums, we're using, you know, multiple sounds, kicks, snares, drums, hi-hats, all that good stuff. So that's why I'm showing you how to do it on the drums uh, because, you know, these single tracks are a lot simpler. So anyway, you go to group B1. If you click the little drop down arrow, you'll see all the different sounds are in there and checked off. Okay. And that's what I want. I want to set it up as wave audio. I don't want AIFF, uh, sample rate 44.1, uh, bit depth 16. I got it going into my machine exports, which is the exports folder, and then name it whatever you wanted to name. This track has happened to be named Django. Or Django, because the D is silent. Anyway, hit export. 
it takes a little while. As you can see, it's playing it super fast. All right. Now, before you close machine, if you happen to be, uh, if you're not using machine in Pro Tools and you just happen to be exporting it and then importing it into Pro Tools, make sure you get the BPMs, which is the beats per minute um, from the actual machine. And on this, we are at <clears throat> 93 BPMs. Okay. So you definitely want to set that up in Pro Tools once you open Pro Tools. So we'll close out of machine, then I'll open up Pro Tools, and then we'll pick up from there. All right, so now I got Pro Tools open. Now we're going to take what we exported in machine and import it into Pro Tools. So then we'll find that folder uh, that has those exports. In my case, it's in Documents, uh, Native Instruments, Machine 2. Exports. So we go to export, scroll down because it's in a folder. This was called the Django. Okay, I'll click on all of these tracks. Mind you, in battery, some of those tracks I, I wasn't even using. I'm still going to import all of this and any of the ones that have no audio, you'll be able to tell because there's no audio file on it. I'll just go ahead and delete those. But I'm, for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and import all of these. So I'll select all of them, uh, clips and current file. That's everything that I selected. I will hit the add button. It'll add it to clips to import. And then I will click done. It will say new tracks. I do want new tracks because I don't want to put it to the clip file and then drag them in. I just wanted to go ahead and create new tracks and bring all of the audio inside of Pro Tools. So I'll hit OK. And you'll see it come right under my click track. Boom. There's everything right there. Any tracks that doesn't have any audio in it, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Which is that guy. This one, this one, this one. And you can tell there's no audio there because you see no, no waveforms like you see in this guy. On here, there's no waveforms. So we'll go ahead and select it. That one's got some, this one doesn't. All right, and we'll go ahead and delete those. And then once we play it, it should be good to go. So now we're good to go. Now, in some of those tracks, it brought over everything over in stereo. Some of those things I don't want in stereo, like my kick or my snares. Well, not all my snares, just the, the, the main snares. Um, anything that you want in mono, you can go ahead and go in Pro Tools and split it into mono tracks and then just delete the stereo track and the second mono track and then make sure you pan it uh, back in the middle because if you don't, it's going to either be panned left or right depending on uh, which track you delete. So just be mindful of that. You don't want everything in here in stereo, especially when mixing. Um, but that's it. Exporting for machine after you make your beat into Pro Tools so that you can go ahead and mix it or go ahead and get it ready for the artist so they can record and then mix it after that. Hope you all have learned something. This is Mo Mackey with Studio One. Please remember to subscribe. Hit that bell button so that you get notifications and also leave a comment below. With your negatives or positives, you know, it doesn't matter. We take everything into consideration so that Studio One could be a better place. Sounded corny as well.